We of the Black Watch now arrest the demonic mind state of mortals for the following crimes. Religion, art, sciences, government, writing, mathematics, astrology, philosophy, inventions, culture, sense of reality, speech techniques, not to mention the tolerance of ignorance, raping of a people, subjecting blackness to an inhumane system, changing of facts, claiming the divine, disgracing a nation, production of a white kryptonite, trespassing on most sacred ground, trying to replace the flag of power with the symbols of slavery and the hardship of hundreds of years. By the way, Van Glorious. This is protected by the red, the black, and the green at the crossroad with a key, sissy. Verbs of power. Now here's the sum of another drum. Now mortals aware, not prepared for a logical sun. My verbs of power are the spirit to spank. My deep, deep blackness, your mind gets dank. Revelation to Genesis, something you cannot dismiss. Keys to crossroad, come to abyss. And find a verb stick swinging while I'm living. Given the rhythm, heed the word and the bass drop given. A funk down, super sound, lyrical, visual. A logical wisdom, forever continual. You're living simplistically and speak of reality. Your science elementary, this speak you can get with me. Look at the wax, it's hieroglyphic, it's actual fact I'm not reading and striving to want to be black Here's the move, cause I see none I never boast, I never brag, I get the job done I'm not the bluntly political, nor am I the physical The rhythmical, spiritual, the mystical, magical Movement is circle, never 90 degrees of a square I'm the gorilla, robotics will run in a scare Just to find that the zero's the ground Come into my temple, have a seat at the round Feel the power Brother, 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 how you make him get down? Professor Overseer, I've got pimp in my crown. It was the pimp that drove the mountainous elephants. It was ignorance that made this irrelevant. I'm not the pasta boy. I'm the African. Call me by name. I'm the original. I taught you to set up this game. You silly mortal, you keep playing the trump. I think they'll have to come and get me from stomping and kicking the rump. Once again, now it comes in the trend. I said, free South Africa. You went to Berlin. Now there's a problem. I stand firm, beating my chest. You think a silly polar bear could ever put this to rest? And yet they still will apologize. Well, I I will epitomize, embrace my children, show them creators' eyes onto the path of the mystical teaching the math. No more to suffer, it's time for the wrath. Feel the power. How's everyone tonight? All right. All right. Peace and real. Peace. It's an honor to have you all here tonight. And it's imagination above, above beyond beliefs as far as the steps we're taking and how we've come together to do it as one to make this thing work. It's just, I don't have the words to really continue to say because I'm just so excited about it right now. Um, what we've been doing here in Waco, Texas, we, we've started, we came together to raise the conscious level of the other brothers and sisters to help them claim to, to claim their nationality to get that to capture that and find out the importance of the law and the history behind it of who they actually are and how we've been lied to for the past uh, 100, 184 years or maybe longer than that as far as how they changed the history and versus the history wrote on us the players so we've been coming together every Friday and some Sundays <coughs> to continue that to keep that vibration going and we discussed and it was an honor for the brother over Shango to come down from the sheik. The sheik invited him, informed us that he was going to come and he brought two other treasures with him, Alexis Bay and Obi Bay. Yeah. Obi Bay. Yeah. Obi Bay. Yeah. And so tonight we would like the rest of you to draw all this information that you can and take it, take, take the will and pleasure. Next, I'd like to introduce Chief Ron Johnson Bay. And thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. I give my very thank you to Brother Man, give honor to too. And 
I like to start from uh, over Shankle Hill, introduce yourself, and then we'll make a trickle all the way around. Everybody introduce yourself so we know who you are and where you come where, where you, where you, that chapter from. So if you will, brother, uh, announce yourself. identify ourselves with Negro, color, black, African, American, Island, land, those are just labels. They have no significance at all. all right. And we know that hey, if you study the dictionary and go to have any you know a noun is the first place of time. You know, black, you know, black is the adjective. And all these so-called names have been uh, they've, they've been copyrighted and trademarked. All right. And uh like I said, I'm gonna leave a lot of this up to our speakers tonight because they I'm anxious to hear them speak because I, I really to speak many times and I'm telling you that he's going to entertain you. And this sister here ain't no joke. Yeah. So well, with that inclined, I'm going to ask to call the brothers to the floor here and have him uh, carry on demonstration. If you got any questions, be sure to ask them. Okay? That, I said peace. 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 Uh, peace. 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 Peace and blessings, everybody. Peace and love. Peace. How's everybody love. feeling this evening? Everybody fine. Okay, uh, I'm not really much of a public speaker. I just speak. So, you know, if I say uh, or this or whatever, you know, please just try to get the message out of what I'm saying. Right. And I don't have all the so-called college formalities and all of those type of things. But uh, when the elder had asked, uh, when he found out I was coming down this weekend, he had asked me to, uh, you know, if I can come in tonight and uh, demonstrate uh, as far as my travels and my learning uh, on this, this knowledge dealing with nationality and whatnot. And, uh, you know, it's been a long journey. I have to say that uh, in the beginning, uh, I didn't know, I was pretty much like everybody else, I was aware that I had, a, you know, didn't have a nationality. You know, I knew we didn't identify with black because being raised, uh, I was born in 1970, so my parents, both my parents worked, my mother and my father, so my great-grandmother primarily raised me in my formative years, and she always said that we're not black, we're what they call black Indian, but we were the first people here in America. Now, this was a lady that was born in 1911, and at the time, her mother was still living when I was born, so she was born around about the 1880s, and it was the same information was that we was here. They identified great great grandma lives as Apache. But as I got older, uh, as we all do, sometimes we may hear the knowledge of the elders in our family and it may not click with us right then. So we kind of store the files somewhere in the back of our minds and we do our own thing. We have to get out there and find out what the world really means to us. So at the time, I fell into the various uh, uh, conscious movements, uh, the uh, black power movement and the resurgence of it in the 80s, the Africa movement and stuff. But at the time, you know, all those lessons, my great grandmother, we're talking about in the 80s now, late 80s, coming up to the early 90s, still playing over in the back of my head. I remember reading a book by Ivan von Sertima they came before Columbus. And when I saw those Omec heads, it was something about those heads that the image just seared itself into my mind. That was my first time ever seeing them. And I could never forget the images of those heads. And so I became curious about them and tried to find out more about who the Omecs were and these heads, these stone heads. So. With that being said, uh, 
at that time, uh, I'd gone into the military around about 92, and uh, you know, the ancestors, man, spirit world is a beautiful thing because we think we're doing things on this realm here out of our own volition, but we don't realize that we're nothing but pieces on the chessboard. Mm -hmm. That's it. So uh, I ended up uh, going into the Navy in 92. Uh, I got stationed up on the East Coast in Connecticut. And at the time, uh, while I was in the military, uh, I took a part-time job. Took a part-time job. So when I would get off at like four o'clock, I would actually go and uh, to the Mash Nantucket uh, Pequot Reservation and help build houses. Now this was uh, a wealthy uh, reservation because they had a casino up there. Uh, one time uh, I got a chance to sit and I talked with the elders and I looked at these people. And uh, one of the sisters, uh, she had asked me, uh, where are you from? And I said, uh, I'm from Arkansas. And uh, she said, hmm, black Indian. And I turned and looked at her and said, why do you say that? She said, I can tell by looking at you. So she started dialoguing with me about intertribal membership. At the time, I was ignorant. I didn't have uh, knowledge of uh, tribal relationships and tribal politics and things of that nature. So what actually uh, had happened was I passed. You know, I said, well, I don't know enough about this. And based, based on the fact that my uh, heritage and pedigree was primarily Arkansas, Mississippi, uh, Texas, uh, Louisiana, this area right here. So. Uh, when she started, uh, you know, uh, giving me the history, she said something that, that made it click. She said, we were the first people here. So I already heard that before. <laughs> I heard that from a great grandma Odessa as a kid growing up. <laughs> so now here I am getting it from some people that look just like me. They have a reservation casino, this, that, and the third. And uh, so it's, it's validity. It starts to, you know, start to become self-evident. Uh, as time moved on, you know, I traveled around Connecticut, you know, quite often in Rhode Island. And uh, the odd part about it was uh, when I would go off of the base, when I would leave the base, uh, history is not the same all over this country or what we're identified by. And regardless of what this European may teach us, don't believe that. When I was up there on the East Coast, I was always identified as a black Indian, and I never told these people anything about my family history. It was just, I guess, a phenotypical look that they identified. But as time went on, I finally got out of the military, uh, had uh, sojourned to other places, moved back to Atlanta for a little bit, and then uh, had finally come back to Arkansas. Uh, stayed in Arkansas for quite a while. Uh, we're talking about like 97, to two, that was late 96 to 2006. Then I moved back to Jordan. Had the wonderful opportunity to go to the Dominican Republic. Now, this was when my whole world actually, at that point in time, dealing with the Moorish paradigm was basically turned 180 upside down. I was in the Dominican Republic. And uh, the family that I was staying with, Dunya uh, uh, Gladys, Dunya is missing, but I always call her Mama Gladys. Uh, her granddaughter uh, had come in from school one day, and I was down there getting, going through a mystery school down there, getting initiated to the mysteries. But uh, I was sitting outside one day, it was a very beautiful day, the sky was beautiful. I mean, it looked like literally paradise. I mean, all the various types of vegetation and fruit trees and everything and I was just sitting out there just enjoying the weather. So her granddaughter Katharina came in one day and had told me, uh, she asked me how I was doing, I told her I was doing fine and uh, she said, uh, uh, I'll be out to talk to you, let me put my school books up. So she put her books up, she came back outside, she sat down and talked. Uh, at the time, uh, the dialogue we had going on was in Spanish. I was speaking some Spanish with some English and, she, and vice versa because she was learning English. But she told me this. She said, you want to know what I learned in school today? And I said, well, what's that, Catherine? She told me, she told me, she said, well, 
My teacher told me that the Moors are the original people of America and that they own the land and that Atlantis was real. Now, I'm not going to go into the Atlantis, but let's just hover on that for a moment about the Moors. First and foremost, it's a totally different history they're getting taught down there than what is being learned here in what they call United States of America. Totally different history. None of us had probably ever even heard that. So when she said her teacher said that the Moors were the original people of the land and that they owned the land, that burnt in my mind. At the time, I still was not identifying with the Moors because I still really was on what my ancestors had taught me. And I tried to see the connection. I didn't learn the connection between the various, what they call black Indian tribes, and the lawful status of Moor until I actually had gone to the temple. 2008. And the speaker of the temple had gone into in-depth history to show how this was intertwined, how those various groups, uh, my lady is Cherokee, Choctaw, Apache, Ouachita, Chickasaw, all of those are melanated groups. Number one, none of them are individual as far as race category. They're only divided by cultures. If you was to take a true person of each one of those groups, Cherokee, Salagi, uh, Choctaw, Chata, uh, Washita, Ushashaktum, Apache, uh, Apaka, and uh, Chickasaw, Chikasha, if you take the original of those groups and you were to dress them uniformly in one garb in ancient times or prior to European coming over here, you would not be able to tell who was who until they opened their mouths and spoke their language of their tribe. Other than that, phenotypically, we all are primarily like one group. So, that's out the window. Now, if you go to the phonetics of a lot of of the language of a lot of these groups, you'll find out that a lot of it, number one, is <coughs> uh, proto-Canaanite or Arabic-based. And not only that, a lot of these groups was also very well familiar with the language of Latin. So, when you tie all of that in, and you find out that proto-Canaanite, Latin, and, uh, uh, and, and Arabic, these various languages that they were well familiar to prior to Columbus, those languages are over more so in the East. So now you have to question who are the so-called Native Americans of number one today? A lot of them, most of them phenotypically don't look like the originals prior to Columbus and uh, European colonialism of English and Dutch and uh, Ellis Island. So you're finding out that you're actually dealing with really an empire. It's a unification of the areas of what you would call the Middle East, the continent so called today is Africa, the continents of North America, South America, the Caribbean Islands, all the way over to Hawaii also all the way up to Southeast Asia, coming down to Southern Asia, today known as India, areas known as Pakistan, Afghanistan, the Arabian Peninsula. This was a global empire. Maritime was nothing new for these people. They've been doing it for thousands of years. So, with that being said, when he had given me this history, uh, I finally saw the connection of where I was lawfully known as Moors. My cultures from these various tribes 
as what my ancestors had recorded and related to. But phenotypically and lawfully, I am a Moor. Now, when you talk about phenotypes and things like that, you have to go into anthropology, you have to go into archaeology, you have to go into the science of genetics, molecular biology, things of that nature, as to what makes those phenotypically on the outside who look very closely related different by varying degrees. So, that led me to, after I lawfully proclaimed my nationality as a Moor, still retaining my cultures uh, that were taught to me as a child, but declaring my nationality and correcting my status within law, go even further into the science of this thing and how the science ties back in to law. Number one, when you're dealing with the science of blood, no one can argue a birthright unalienably given to you by rights of blood. It's impossible. No judge can do it. No court can do it. If they try to do this, then basically what they're doing is committing blasphemy right before your eyes mm -hmm. by saying that they <coughs> have the right to speak on behalf of the most high creatures created of the heavens and earth, something which was already ordained and put inside of you, and they're trying to reinterpret it. You can't do it. What your ancient forefathers were, you are today, without doubt or contradiction. There is no one who was able to change man or woman from the descendant nature of his forefathers and his foremothers, unless their power extends beyond the great universal creator. Allah himself, whether you call him Yahweh, Ruler Mary, Amun, Allah, and many other names that we knew the primal universal creator force by. So, with that being said, it is very important that not only do you correct your nationality and your status, but you have to understand, comprehend, and understand why you are doing it. Because if you're not strong in the mind up here with the aspects of nationality, we're dealing with European psychological terroristic colonialism. And it is in their best interest to psychologically break you in any aspect that you may show weakness. And right now, nationality is the order of the day and is of divine importance. So that is something that they're going to fight hard to keep you from. And the reason being is because if the original primogenitor by blood birthright inheritors of this land do not stand up, the land falls into abandonment and thus achievement. And then achievement means it comes under the jurisdiction of the state. So this is very important. Now, going back to the science of genetics, they already know who they have found over here 12,000 years ago, 15,000 years ago, 40,000 years ago, 50,000 years ago. And the more they keep digging, the more they find us. So, with that being said, you can go and look up Luzia who they found over here, or La Pia Bramelha for the hominid skull of this lady they call Luzia, and see the morphological reconstruction of her, her face. And you can tell that does not look like the people that you find on these reservations today called Indians. You can go look up the new one they found in an underwater cave in Mexico that they call Naya, and also the Del Hoyo uh, Negro Cave Girl. 
and look at the morphological reconstruction of the face that they found. She does not look like anyone on these reservations today. And you can go look up the woman they found in Texas about 10,000 years ago and did a morphological reconstruction of her face. And there's another one called Pignon Woman, and they did a morphological reconstruction of her face. All these faces that they have done on these women that they have found look like what they call, so-called, black or African-American people today, lawfully known as Moors. I'm going to get into the lawful aspect here in a minute. Hey, am, I, am I on the time limit? Or just, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no. Just, okay, okay. Thank you. Sorry about the interruption, y'all. You need some water? They're road. Yeah. Say what now? You need a water? Please, you don't mind. So I'm saying, thank you. Speech. So, with that being said, with these matriarchs that they have found in these grounds over here in the Americas, this is establishing your matriarchal blood right to this soil. But, you must understand comprehend and overstand that without a proper status, you cannot reach them. So, excuse me, let me take a drink. I want to talk about the word Indian as well. Because right now a lot of people have a problem with wanting to let that word go. But, not only have they found these matriarchs in the ground, there are archaeological remains and anatomical remains, but they found other anatomical remains of our ancestors here, such as in East Holliston Mills, Tennessee, what is called the pygmy skulls. These skulls are over 40,000 years old. Two things dealing with these skulls show them that they cannot be of Asiatic mongoloid or of European descent. The reason being is because, number one, they have in their jaw what's known as prognathism. That's a certain feature in the jaw which we predominantly carry. And not only that, we have what's called uh, dolicocephalic skulls, or our heads are more long, longer than, wider than what they call brachiocephalic, those that you see of the mongoloid phenotype or the Chinese phenotype. So they already know who these skulls belong to. So we're talking about 40,000 years ago. Not only that, if you want to get into the topic of, well, what color did they look like? Cavelli Sforza was an Italian geneticist. You can go and look him up. By 1962, I'm going to say, don't pin me to that date, but somewhere around in that area. They had primarily pretty much cataloged the whole genographic population pretty much globally. They actually found that the gene that creates lack of melanin or what creates the, uh, the, uh, the paleness in the skin did come about to roughly about six to 12,000 years, or six to 10,000 years ago. So you're looking at probably anywhere from, uh, what, 4,000 BC to maybe 8,000 BC, at the most 10,000 BC. So we know that these people that they found buried in the ground from East Holliston Mills, Tennessee. Number one, were you melanin dominant peoples? That's number one. And number two, we know that the matriarchs that they found, uh, the Hoyo Negro Cave Girl, Naya, uh, La Pia Baromel Harfour, Luzia, uh, the Pignon woman and the lady that they found here in Texas were also melanin dominant, you melanin people. So this lets you know when you ask the question, well, how did you know you was here first? Look at the archaeological evidence. It speaks for itself.
Now, when it comes to how long we've been here, you can go over here to South Carolina, South Carolina, and uh, the Topper site in Allendale, South Carolina. And a lot of the European archaeologists wanted to hold on to the uh, it's a group of people, what do they call them? The Clovis, the Clovis people. I said, well, we, these were the first people that came into American stuff. No, 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 no. Topper site in Allendale, South Carolina has been radiocarbon dated at roughly about 52,000 years ago. So, once again, if you go to the science of genetics, we know that those people established their site 52,000 years ago were you melanin dominant. They look like us. And not only that, the brachiocephalic skull type didn't come in until roughly about 10,000 BC. So at that point in time, it was only the lithocephalic peoples or those with our head shape and structure and prognathism. So now we know who was over here roughly about 52,000 years ago. Now, they may not like it, Europeans and other groups of people may not like it, but who cares what they like because the facts speak for themselves, you know. And no matter how much you try to bury a truth, it's always going to resurface. So, here's the thing. How does this interplay into law? Well, a lot of people want to try to say that the term more is recent, that the Greeks and the Romans actually called us Moors. Well, if you go historically and analyze that, you will actually find that uh, the Greco-Roman language, it has two parts in it. Some of it is derived from the Medunetia, or the language that Kemet spoke, and they received it by way of the people known as, uh, uh, they call them Phoenician, but Phoenician, is that correct? Is that how well, that's what the Greeks call them, Punis. Yeah, Punis. Punis. But, but uh, Punis. Yeah, Punis, yeah. but they were really uh, the best they caught the Yeah, well, well, Canaanites. 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 Oh, okay. Canaanites. Okay. Yeah, Canaanites, yeah. which once again was us anyway. Mm -hmm. And another part of the Greco Roman language is Sanskrit. A lot of people don't know that. Latin and Sanskrit are very, very similar in their words. So, if you look at the time of uh, the history of Alexander the Great, when Alexander the Greek, yeah, the Hellenist or the Greek, I don't see anything great about him, but uh, had come down out of Macedonia in those various areas coming down into humiliated lands, number one, the area that they call Greece was already inhabited by us, which is known as the Etruscans. So, same with uh, the, uh, the, the Italian peninsula. So, regardless to what they tell you, all you have to do is go do your homework, don't believe anything that I tell you. You just go and research it for yourself. You will find out that we were the earliest cultures of the Iberian Peninsula, today known as Spain and Portugal, and also Italy, as well as Greece. So. When the Europeans started to come out of the Caucasus Mountains region and come down into these areas, it was a reign of terror. And a lot of us was pushed out of our homelands and driven into other lands. So, Alexander the Great tried to go into Western Asia, which is known as the Indus Kush civilization. He was beaten back. In fact, he had the brakes beat off of him <laughs> by a Moor named Chandra Gupta Maria. Now, I'm going to do your homework upon him. And he was the king of the Mauryan Empire, now today known as India. So, when he was driven up out of India, Chandra Gupta Maria, C H A N D R A. Gupta, G-U-P-T-A, Maria, M-A-U-R-Y-A. Now, he's driven out of India for 
was to come back into the lands known today as Africa, but anciently known as Tameri, that's a Middle Neta classification, as well as Taniesi and Taseti. Taniesi being Ethiopia, the land of the gods, Taseti, Sudan, the land of the bow, and Tameri, which is technically really the land of the Moors, or the blessed land. But you're going to find out that when Alexander had came back into those lands, and saw the Kushites, or the Ethiopians, he said that these people look like the people that I ran into in the land of Moria, or India. So there was already a phenotypical connection between those people of India and those people of Kush. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it is impossible that the Europeans could have called us Moors and named us Moors because the Mauryan Empire was a name of self-identification of that region. In other words, it was a name of self-determination and self-identification. It was just given to the cousins who were in Ethiopia, Egypt, Sudan, uh, 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 Libya, uh, Mauritania, Nigeria, Morocco, in other words, that whole North African region. Once again, in ancient times, if you were to take people from those various regions and various families, clans, families make up clans, clans make up uh, tribes, tribes make up nations, nations coalesce into an empire. If you were to take all of those people, and stand them side by side and put them in one uniform dress, you would not be able to tell them apart until they opened their mouth and spoke. So it became a phenotypical classification for all of those peoples that Europeans had identified as Moors. Now if you look into the spelling of Mauria, M-A-U-R-Y-A, and then how the Greeks had spelled Maros, M-A-U-R-O-S, and how the Romans had spelled Marus, M-A-U-R-U-S. What is the difference? What is the root? M-A-U-R. Across three different languages. The language that they spoke on the Mauryan dynasty, which I think was Sanskrit. Tamil is another one. They have so many languages over there. But either way, it was in what they call the empire, Mauryan Empire, then Greek, and then Roman. It lets you know that it was a term of identifica identification with eumelanated peoples that they actually had gotten by way of the Mauryan Empire. The Greeks got it from there. The Romans got it from the Greeks. So with that being said, that word traveled throughout history, dealing with the Europeans, and to Germany, England, France, Spain, Portugal, all the way until they had come over to the western half of the empire here. Now, Everybody still with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not losing anybody. Anymore. No. Okay, y'all want me to stop? No. 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 When treaties began to be made with the Europeans, you have to look at the classification of the people with whom they were making these treaties. Same with over here. Okay. Barry Phil, he was our, uh, an epigrapher, a Harvard professor, and he was a professor at the University of New Zealand. He had come over here and started uh, digging in the ground and 
researching the ancient writing and things, they found carved on walls and written in caves and everything. And he found uh, 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 Punic Iberian, uh, Kufic Arabic, and various other ancient writings over here. And uh, let's just deal with the Arabic part for now. Uh, they've also found Medunetu ancient comedic writing over here, but we're not going to deal with that. We're just going to stick right here to this point, dealing with, because we're going to tie into this. Kufi Arabic writing is found amongst the Pini. According to Barry Fell and other people have, tested, uh, have uh, done tests uh, dealing with this writing and the other archaeological artifacts, it dates back to 650 AD. Now, Europeans didn't come westwards until 1492. Now, Islamic artifacts have been found all over this North American continent. From the northeast to the southwest, from the northwest to the southeast, everywhere in between. Old coins, writings, carvings with Bismillah and Rahman al Rahim. Uh, name of Allah, the Beneficent and Merciful, uh, uh, basis, uh, language that is spoken amongst the people. You have to understand that with that strong of an influence of Islam over here on the continent, by the time the Europeans began to come westwards, there was already an empire established over here. It was well rooted, firmly planted. The difference between Christian ideology and the Islamic ideology is the discovery of one Muslim or Muslim is to the benefit of all Muslims via the Quran. So there was a lot of intermixing via our Islamic cousins, as well as the archaeological evidence in the language and the governing doctrine, which was the Quran. So if you read that, it's actually a trust document. So the Malian Empire, if you want to look at it, as far as in the Age of Empires, under Abu Bakr II and Khan Khan Mansa Musa, who was the wealthiest man who ever lived. Uh, personal wealth, they said today, would be about $400 billion. His personal wealth. Had already firmly planted the empire and opened it up to the western back half of what is now today known as Africa for massive colonization. Colon, uh, colonization. So, under the Quran. So, when the Malian Empire had fallen into a collapse and had fractured into various other little kingdoms, Songhai and all of these empires, the next strongest empire to rise was Morocco. Now, being that it is an Islamic empire, he just inherited what Mali already had an interest in, which was the western half of the empire, which is the Americas. So, being that we know phenotypically they had already classified us as Moors, if you come up to the treaty that was made the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. And if you actually go and read that treaty, there were two treaties made. There was the 1787 Treaty and the 1836 Treaty. It tells you who they made the treaty with. It specifically spells out as Moors. And not only that, it tells you they did not make the treaty with the Kingdom of Morocco. It specifically spells out in there the Moroccan Empire. It says so. It's in the treaty in and of itself. Not only that, the treaty starts out with Bismillah el Rahman el Rahim in the Arabic, in the name of, of God, in the English translation, the name of God, the merciful, the clement. So the treaty was originally presented in Arabic, translated into English. So you have to understand how what they call trust law works. This lets you know that we're dealing with trust law. If this treaty is made in the name of Allah, and we know that the governing document is the Quran, and it's made between European powers and uh, Moroccan.
Ottoman Empire, then that lets you know that first and foremost, the agreement of this trust or this mutual relationship between people in understanding is this treaty and everything is supposed to be adjudicated by what? The Quran. Because the treaty was made in the name of Allah. So if you go and look at the Quran in and of itself, Surah 22, Ayat 65, says that a trust was formed between man. And it says that did not Allah give to man the entire globe and all the ships that sail at sea. Y'all can go and read it for yourself. Yes. Question I have is, so we already find it out that things are the opposite of what they are. So as they are forcing Christianity on us, yes. the opposite should be uh, Islam. Well, this, the, this is an Islamic trust. This is a Waqif. The land is actually held in a Waqif. Waqif is an Islamic trust. And you, you spell Waqif is W-A-Q-F. This is we're dealing with trust law. So they, so the Europeans adopted Christianity or created Christianity and forced it on us in places. Yes, Christ, Christianity was not Amen. was not indigenous to this land prior to Columbus. It was brought over by Columbus, right. but Islam was indigenous. And Islam actually has its roots even older than that. Islam actually finds its way out of the uh, religious uh, mystery systems of ancient Kemet, which I'll call Egypt. Yeah. So it deals with that. So with that being said, um, <clears throat> this is why it's important to proclaim your nationality and truly have a full comprehension of what it means to have your lawful nationality, which is that of yours. Uh, because without it, you cannot reach the law in and of itself. The law is written for persons, places, and things. The law does not deal with adjectives. If you're classifying yourself as an adjective, then you're placing yourself outside of the law. And thus, they can't see you. Maxims of law say one outside of the law, an outlaw, is civilly dead. Bouvier's Dictionary of Law, 1856, Maxims of Law. Also, Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. It says the same thing, Maxims of Law. So now you have not only, as a Moor, you have links to indigenous status, you have links to rights in the treaty, you have links. Can I say a question? Oh, okay. You have uh, 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 links to enforcement of something that is lawful and constitutional. And not only that, you have links to ancestral pedigree. Because under this treaty, or this trust, a trust is formed of three parts. You have a grantor, trustor, or settler, that is one who establishes the trust. Then you have a trustee, one who is the holder of lawful title to this property for the benefit of the beneficiary. This is trust law. Grantor, trust or settlor, trustee, beneficiary. And we are beneficiaries to this vast estate and to this land by the various matriarchs that I've explained to you, archaeological, whom they found in this land. Uh, the digs of uh, Allendale, Topper Site, South Carolina. The uh, the pygmy skulls that they found in East Holliston Mills, Tennessee. And all the land rights, mineral rights, water rights, all air and all sky and all space rights. Because a maximum of law, you can look up in Black's Law Dictionary, second edition. He who owns the soil owns up to the sky and down to the depths of the earth. Mm. So, and not only that, that makes you a primogenitor freeholder by blood, birthright, inheritance, a land owner, a land lord, and a land creditor. So if we're land creditors, there has to be a land debtor, somebody that owes. And you cannot do business in the landlord's house <laughs> without compensating the landlord. So now that gives you rights 
to all contracts, arrangements, or agreements made, whether public or private, that takes place upon your land due to non-compensation for the use of your land and natural resources. It's equity law. We're talking about equity now. There is no something for nothing. You cannot do that. That's in violation of the law. That's also in violation of, they call themselves Christian. Hey, you go look it up in Deuteronomy chapter, I think it's 25, where it talks about unequal weights and measures. It's detestable before the European Christian God. So now they have to compensate us even underneath their religion. Well, they don't want to look like a hypocrite before God. Because right now, it's about unequal weights and measures. Mm -hmm. So this is the reason why you proclaim your nationality. And another thing that I do endorse is DNA. The reason why I endorse DNA because without a nationality, they have labeled you as an animal. Man has been classified underneath the agriculture code. You can go look it up for yourself. United States Code, Title 7, USC 136, parentheses D, man is labeled as an animal. Title 7 is the United States Code of Agriculture. So, you have no inheritable rights if you're not even seen as human. Before you can even reach human rights, you must prove that you're human. Mm -hmm. Removes all doubt and all disputes. All doubts and all disputes are removed. And as a human, you have a right to a nationality. Human rights are guaranteed and protected underneath another strong treaty that they have made. It's called the United Nations Charter Treaty. I'll wait till everybody gets seven. Am I going on too long? Y'all want me to stop? No, no, no. While everybody's seven, you me get some water. Catch y'all off camera. <laughs> Catch y'all on the hot mic. <laughs>
want to get into the uh, Quran too. That's not exactly true what you're saying. There have been some things dealing with that Quran as well. See, because a lot of people don't know that the original Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad in Kufi. It not, was not revealed in the modern day Arabic that you see today. Modern day Arabic has sun, uh, sun uh, letters and moon letters or vowels. Kufi does not. It was tumble when it was spoken. So therefore, uh, there are children as well, but if they want to be 100% compliant with the Quran, they need to teach the whole truth and not have one half foot in truth and one half in falsehood. They can't do that. Could yeah. you explain the grant of set of trust with beneficiary? Yes. It's, okay, you said we're the beneficiary. Yes. Explain the grant of set of, who is the grant of set of these trustees? The grantor is the most high creator, creator of the heavens and earth because you didn't make the planet. And not only that, there's another trust in the Bible that does not deal with Europeans either, and I'll go into that. Yes, so who's a trustee? Okay, the trustee, yes. we're trustees and beneficiaries. We're both. Yes, mm -hmm. and our descendants are, are the beneficiaries as well as uh, us as well. Now, if you go to Surah 22, Ayat 65, that's a trust. If you go into the Bible, in the, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28, that is a trust as well. So, and if you go to, in the Gospels, and I don't know exactly which uh, chapter and verse, there's maybe some that's more versed on the uh, New Testament than I am, but Yeshua says, see, it's not that I have not, that I have not come to change the law, but merely fulfill, for I assure you, heaven and earth will pass away before one jot or one tittle shall be changed or removed from the law. So, we're still here on heaven and earth. It has not passed away. So, therefore, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28 is still as effective in the New Testament. Which means, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28, he said to the first creation, not the second creation, because if you go back and read there, there's two creations in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, male and female were created together. In the second creation, it was only man. So the first that was created was the gods. That's us. We was given dominion. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the land, air, and water. L-A-W, law. We make the law on the planet. And all things that dwell up therein. Hey, that's what it says. It is what it is. It says what it says. So therefore, they can't even be trustees of the planet. The Pope cannot even be what he called Vicarius and Fili Dei, Viceroy of the Son of God, which he's a trustee. Because he has to deal with canon law. Canon law is derived from the Bible. So if it's derived from the Bible, then guess what? You have to still come back to the first trustees and the beneficiaries, which is us. <laughs> yes. Uh, any other questions? The Bible, the Quran that Mohammed brought to the Muslim, mm -hmm. was there a Quran before that? Uh, no, the Quran he brought was revealed in, in Kufic writing. It was it was it was in Kufic. But was mm -hmm. that the original Quran of the land? Yes, the one that was first revealed to him. Okay. But but what happened was there was uh it's based off <coughs> older teachings though. Like I said, all of that came out of Kemet. Okay. Even the Bible itself came out of Kemet. Right, I understand that. Yeah. But you have to understand that when he had passed away, when Prophet Muhammad had passed away, there was a uh, infighting for the uh lawful successor or caliph, mm -hmm. and the Quran ended up being destroyed. Mm -hmm. But there were some who had committed it to heart, remembering, yeah. mm -hmm. and had put it back together. But still, even they're putting it back together, some of the surahs are not even in the original places as it was. Okay. But it's there, but it's not in the original order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's where it is. Okay. But being that right now, those are the only trust documents, if you want to look at it as uh, uh, an, an, an ecclesiastical, or a uh, 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 or Sharia sense that the two major powers of the world have to go by, the Bible and the Quran. Because make no mistake, at the end of the day, everything dealing with the Europeans uh, and how they do business and commerce is based on that Bible. Everything dealing with the Arab world or the Islamic world, how they do commerce and their, and, and their everyday way of life is based on the Quran. So you, you're going to have to learn trust law. You're going to have to learn where you fit in trust law. Because we're the law, technically, we're the lawful successors of both. Mm -hmm. So is that why today the two 
biggest topic is the Christianity and the Islam. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going on. Yes, the Crusades never ended. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, they just they just shifted around the globe. Okay. Yeah, but the Crusades never ended. Yeah. Changed their name. Yeah, that's it. The Crusaders just changed their name, mm -hmm. and they just shifted different uh, geographical positions around the globe. Yes, brother. I'd like to just interject this one little portion just to kind of bring that last statement into the vision of everybody's mind. We know about America, and we have the slave trade, and we always mention that, right? And the three main slave traders were Arab Britain. I'm just talking about America. That's the Trans-Saharan, okay. the Arabian side. But just on this Western Hemisphere, we deal with Great Britain, we deal with France, we deal with Italy, or partly Portugal, which was uh, some little territory of Italy, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we take that into modern day. That's back 15, 1600s, 14, 13, 1200. Now we bring it up to modern day. It's 2014. Who are the main people, European powers, that are in control? The Crown, Great yep. Britain, Lords of London, etc. That's right. Um, you've got Spain again, but remember, it's all about the changing of the names. Just like they changed our names and titles, they changed theirs as well. So they were previously, and in those Bible texts, they called themselves Romans. It's all, all throughout there how the Romans were running everything, so much so that the people had to go and defer from their own ecclesiastical law in order to crucify the Messiah. They had to go from their messianic or ecclesiastical law to the law of the land at that time being the Roman land law. Go to Caesar, render unto Caesar what is Caesar, dealing with taxes and everything even back then, right? And then the third one, of course, was which one? We got Great Britain with the United Kingdom. We got Spain, when we we're talking about who they were, with Rome, that's who they were. And then we have the other ones being um, um, uh, France. Well, France is still there, but they were always considered the pansies. And so they just pretty much commandeered, they had their land, uh, or their <coughs> jurisdiction commandeered by uh, who we now know as the bankers. I'm going to go into the history of the bankers. Yeah. The bankers today are nothing but nice Templars. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The exactly. nice Templars. The Templars had established banking houses during the Crusades all the way from Jerusalem all the way through, out through, uh, through Europe and whatnot. So you're still dealing with, like I said, the Crusades never ended. It never ended. Because yeah. now the new... Yeah. The new Romans, or the new name for the same old Romans, the new name for the same old Romans are the same gangsters that we now look at right now. They, we know them as gangsters. Al Capone, okay. Mussolini. Let me go deep, Rome. Now. They're called Italians now. But where is Italy? Isn't that Rome? Yeah. In, in the Vatican, <coughs> in Rome, exactly. Don't the Templars work for the Pope? That's the old the Vatican today, and all of its commercial interests is the old Holy Roman Empire expanded. That's what it is. Make no mistake about it. So, when you have Christians today who say they believe in Jesus Christ, we're going to get into into that patented intellectual property. Mm. It goes back to, you were asking about Constantine, yeah, right? right. When you yeah, 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 Const was the, was the Bible that the Christians yeah, trust. Yeah. That. Now, that's what we're talking about. The Constantinian form of Christianity is their trust. Because in hoc signo vincis, in this sign you will conquer. That's what came out of the Council of Nicaea. And it was an editing of a compilation of the various books that he wanted to com be compiled and create the new Bible. And that was what they would use as the political weapon as they spread out, took over territories, and implanted their psychological programming. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's a trust. And how it actually became even further established as a trust was through the papal bulls. Everyone has to know about this. The dumb diverses. Say what the papal bull is. The papal bull is the order that the Pope gives. It's like a judgment or a decree. A papal bull is like 
when he puts it down, it's like, this is what God says. Signed by whatever pope. We are now still suffering from the doctrine of discovery via the Intercatera Divina, papal bull, 1493. And the Dom de Versus, and I think another one was the, uh, uh, the Unum Sanctum. These are papal bulls, various papal bulls. And the, uh, uh, I think the one called the Eternus Regis. So, y'all need to learn these because only by you placing yourself back in proper person can you remove yourself from these various jurisdictions of these bulls and everything that came after those bulls, which is actually European colonialist law because they right now are occupying our land by the doctrine of discovery. And there's a case, I think it's called Johnson versus McCullough, I could be wrong about it, but it was an 1828 case that the judge, U.S. Supreme Court judge, said that the doctrine of discovery is what gave the Europeans rights to this land. The doctrine of discovery is based off of the papal rules. So Columbus, when he had actually come over to the West, he was not selling for Ferdinand and Isabella. Ferdinand and Isabella was under the jurisdiction of the Vatican, so by default, he was selling for the Vatican. Which again, those same two nations, Ferdinand, Spain, Isabella, the United Kingdom, aka uh, Great Britain and all that, unifying the name of the United Kingdom. All of these things they just imitated off of us for, for whatever reason. And now whether we, we gave them some, some sort of stewardship as well. But that all stems from what is happening. I just wanted you to keep that in mind as we look at trying to make these connections of how the history and law are directly related Goes hand to hand. our current, present situation mm -hmm. and why nationality is so important is because nationality is the remedy. It mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Nationality is definitely the remedy. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that being said, like I said, I yes, yes, Elder. <coughs> How do you uh, challenge the paper bulls and how do you go about challenging them to be able to override that to get back to your original status? You actually have to go into, uh, once you correct your status in it, uh, on your own in and of itself, uh, like I've done, then you could actually write the Pope and let him know where he's outside of, you know, of the Bible in and of itself because first and foremost, uh, custodianship of the planet was not given to him. He's not a part of that first creation. It was on the Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28 that pertains to us. Science is already proving that you melanated people were the first people on the planet. So therefore, in conformity of the first trust, Genesis 1, verse 26 to 28, what actually what science is saying, that we were the first people on the planet, then custodianship was given to us so he can't challenge that. He doesn't, he, he doesn't have the right to speak to that, speak with that. So if you write him, will he respond, or you just write him and put him on notice of the information? You can, you, you can put him on notice, but you can put him in a situation where he has to speak the truth. Because once again, his canon law is based on the Bible. The canon law is based on the Bible, from their interpretation of it. If you go read Proverbs 22, uh, verse 17 through 21, it says that when you write someone words of truth, that it is their duty to respond. So that's an affidavit right there, Proverbs 22. <laughs> <laughs> verse 17 through 21 in and of itself. So that's why we have so many affidavits. When we go to do business, we do it by affidavit. Always. Yes, brother. I want to ask, um, when you go and file for your son, all right, how do you uh, choose your name? Is there some type of remedy? Or well, a... well, first let me correct on the term sovereignty. Okay. Number one, you're already aboriginal to the land. Mm -hmm. Nations are sovereign. Mm -hmm. Nations hold the sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Individuals, we are parts of nations. So the sovereignty is something that is held collective via the forming of a nation. 
You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What you're asking about <coughs> is a correction of status to be in accordance with your birthright. Mm -hmm. You don't have to ask anybody for permission of that. All you have to do <coughs> is do the proper documentation, give everyone notice of it, in accordance with the laws that award and afford you the right to correct your status. And once they have been given notice, then you just make public record of it. Uh, now, we have to understand that we're dealing with a machine who is lawless. And uh, mm -hmm. the thing about it is, he doesn't even respect his own mother or his own father. <laughs> so whether he respects your right in law to correct your status, that's completely a uh, different subject. But we do know that if he fails to, you are awarded remedies via your rights. So therefore, if he still refuses to say that, uh, well, I don't have to respect that. Well, your right to have a nationality is backed up by the United Nations Charter Treaty of 1945, Articles 55 and 56, found that United States statutes at large, 59 stat. Uh, 1031 through 1218. That's a human right, and not only that, it's underneath Article 6 of the Constitution, the United States of America, which says that treaties are the supreme law of the land. Mm -hmm. So now we get into areas known as treason. Mm -hmm. For him to violate your human rights, after you've, after you've declared yourself human, and established your rights as awarded to you by international law, now we come into a whole new level of crime known as treason. And not only that, once we do come together, we can hold them a crime accountable underneath war crimes, just like they did the Nazis and the Nuremberg uh, tribunals, where they started around <coughs> people that was so old, man, that they was folded over like lawn chairs. They didn't care. They said, hey, he was over there, get him. <laughs> brought him to court. <laughs> Find hiding all down in Peru and Argentina and stuff. We don't care how old you are. You did this in your prime. So guess what? You're going to pay for it even if you are old. Yeah, so that's the reason why it is imperative that we correct our status so we can begin holding them accountable. Because guess what? Believe it or not, I want y'all to go look up something. Go on YouTube and look up poor whites in South Africa. I want all of y'all to look that up when you get the chance. Just Google that on YouTube, Poor Whites of South Africa. When Mandela started interjecting policies for the indigenous people of the land, watch what happened to the European colonial status over there. That's what status does once it's properly expressed. In the present day, exactly. Yeah. So what you're just saying is, right up when Mandela was in office, yeah. he was alive, yeah. he did what we're doing over there. Because I know they're not going to let that out, but that's what happened. That's why Obama kept meeting with him, and he was secretly telling Obama. He had also told Obama he needed to let Leonard Peltier go, give him amnesty, a well, amnesty, but uh, a part. Mm -hmm. And Peltier was uh, dealing with the Lakota and the problem of uh, wounded knee and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, thing about it is uh, when you correct your status, everything first and foremost, nationality is international law. Mm -hmm. This is something that deals in international law and is protected and secured by treaty law, which means if it's treaty law, it's constitutional law. So uh, what's going to happen is they're going to have to return everything back that was taken about them. All the gold, all the silver, all the commerce, that, uh, the commercial uh, uh, monetary gains that was made from the natural gas, the oil, all of these things. Because if you don't, it's unjust enrichment. You can't do it. So you got to give it back. And you cannot pay us with gold and silver that was taken up out of the ground of the land lord. Yeah. We already we already <laughs> owned it. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, what what my question was when you claim the status? Mm -hmm. 
and you choose a new name. And uh -huh. a new yes. What, why do you, what is it a is it a certain reason or why would you adopt a certain name? What is your last name? Harris. Where you did? Where's that name from? Uh, I have a certain state. Okay. Do you think your people always bore that title? Uh, I can only assume that they have not. That's what I can only assume. Okay. When you find out the origins of that, mm -hmm. that will make more sense. To yeah. search sock for something else. Yes, why you proclaim your nationality and correct your name. Okay. You can correct your name. <coughs> it can be Harris just by putting your title at the end. Or bait, mm -hmm. you're correcting it just that, just that way as well. Yes, but you have to, man, first and foremost, get in the position so therefore you can stand above just having Harris. Because we're not going to go into that, that'll probably be something for another discussion. But there's some things tied to that name when you were born that, uh, that have created massive commerce for them. And created situations of unjust enrichment, mm -hmm. uh, where you haven't seen any commercial benefit. But I'm not going to go into that this evening. Right. I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. But uh, just by having L or a pay, okay. yeah. yeah, basically links you back to your ancestors. You don't want to throw away the name. Okay. The reason being, you have equity tied up into that, and that's wow. on another subject. Okay. You have equity tied up into it. We're not going to go into that, though. <laughs> Uh, where they have to answer, <coughs> Proverbs 22, verse 17 through 21. Yes, and Proverbs 22, verse 28 says, do not remove an ancient landmark which was placed there by your ancestors. That's mm -hmm. talking about the lands and uh, the land of the mounds and the pyramids. Can you speak up a little bit, ma'am, for the, for the camera? Speak up a little bit. Oh, okay. Oh, he said no. He said he said Robert Mugabe. Robert Mugabe. Yeah. Of Zimbabwe. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, he, I know that too. He said that they couldn't move any landmarks. <laughs> Let me explain something to you that you mean to me, and I know. All right. All these golf courses. Mm -hmm. Okay. All these back ball arenas and football arenas. They built those to cover up the landmarks. <coughs> They even went as far to go to a lot of bigger sites so they could bury a ground and build a casino on top of that. Mm -hmm. And to show what was beneath the ground, they put the snakes and the pyramids on top of it. Mm -hmm. Sure did. Mm -hmm. That was our burial ground. If you go to the Grand Canyon, you'll find the Temple of Isis there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Temple of Aset. Well, That's what we call it, Aset. Mm -hmm. But the Europeans call it Temple of Isis. You know, some people may not know Aset, you know what I'm saying? So I have to give it how they, they read it. <coughs> But, uh, go ahead, brother. Y'all want for you to get started. Uh, I think the young man also wants to know about the names. Yeah. What what titles all we can use and what they mean. El, Bay, Bay. Okay. The elder, he has probably more vast knowledge on that okay. than I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you probably want to direct your uh, question. I know El is the creator of the law. It's the creator of force. Bay is the enforcers of it. So... Uh, as far as Day, Al, and Ali, I will let the elder explain that to you. But uh, once you uh, once you do that, a new man, you know, warrants a new name. A new woman warrants a new name. Yeah, once you begin to wake up, you know, like the, the proverbial Haram and Biff, you cannot stay with the same uh, uh, title because he who controls the title controls the property. <laughs> yeah. So, and once again, you know, there's a, ca a classification and a category tied to whatever your first name is in Harrison. Harris? Harris. 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 Okay. Speaking, uh, speaking, it, it, speaking of titles, yes. uh, uh, break down that word, Mason. Mother and son? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, from way it was uh, uh, taught to me, Ma, M-A, and son or mother and son. But uh, you know, I had a revelation on what that compass and square actually mean. Mm -hmm. And I talked with uh, 
one of the clan uh, brothers who actually uh, uh, is, is, uh, was a part of that organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I revealed to him the ancient science of what that actually means, mm -hmm. he was like, yo, man, they don't even teach that up in there. I said, I know they don't. I know. So, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but the thing about it is you have to look at one draws a square and one draws a circle. A circle is perfect, complete. It has no beginning and no end. Mm -hmm. That is the energy known as the spirit. We have no beginning. We have no end. Mm -hmm. A square is finite. Mm -hmm. It can only form 90 degrees. So all the compass the square actually means is spirit matter encased in solid matter, or energy encased in flesh, your soul encased in flesh. That's all it really means. Your true self housed in gross, dense, physical, material body. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. The circle inside the square. Mm -hmm. That's, the, that's the, 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 uh, the esoteric or the metaphysical meaning. Mm -hmm. Another thing they don't tell you is that if you go look up uh, Lord Pakal, the Mayan king who built the ancient city of Palenque, when they had gone to find him in his tomb and they had buried him, he had in his hand a perfectly carved cube of jade and a perfectly carved sphere of jade. What does that have to do with Western Freemasonry when it existed long before it? <laughs> These are ancient metaphysical principles that came from our ancestors, men known as ancient Kemet, because the Mayans were nothing but the inheritors of the ancient Kemetic Empire over here in the West. A good book that breaks that down is Ancient Oriental Mystic Masonry. Uh, Ancient Mystic Oriental Masonry. It was written in 1909, I think. And you can go look that up. It's a very old book. So, but uh, basically, uh, I'm going to cap it off with basically the, the genetics. Uh, your genetic inheritance via DNA testing is going to tie you to the soil. What they're finding out is that a lot of the matrilineal, patrilineal, haplogroups groups are actually non-African in origin. And they're not wanting to reveal this because right now they have been propagating the out of Africa theory. And there's a reason for that. So uh, what happens is we know right now that the highest diversity of O-type blood is over here in the Western Hemisphere. I don't know how many of you are O. But O type blood, the highest diversity of O type blood is over here in the Western Hemisphere. Number one. Number two, uh, they found uh, the oldest Y chromosome or patrilineal haplogroup in South Carolina, coming from the so called African American known as the Perry family, and it's 338,000 years old. <laughs> so when they compared it against its closest relative, uh, known as the Mbo peoples in Cameroon, it didn't match up. They couldn't find any other match anywhere for it. So they couldn't say it came from Africa. The only other place it could originate from was where they found it, the Americas. And this was found in a so-called African-American family. <coughs> I'm willing really more than likely to predict that they don't have their nationality or their status correctly, which is such a shame because of the find that they found in their genetic inheritance. So. With that being said, that gives the importance of why we need to DNA test because all of this stuff is going to be relevant. It's not about what you say, it's about in law what you can prove. Yeah, maximum law. That it can be proven, must, must be proven. proven. Yeah, so. With that, I bow gracefully. I yield the floor to the next speaker. So, uh, well, I'm, I'm speaking, but I just open the floor up to questions. So, if anybody got any questions, please feel free. I think so. Yeah. The question that you were talking about, I have these questions. I know if you say more, not more, it's America. Why? Mm -hmm. America is a continent. Mm -hmm. It just tells our geographical position in the world. More is actually your nationality. Uh, you can say more is American. I normally say American more. But American in and of itself, a man or woman cannot be a continent. Just like uh, when you say American, you have to be specific. What America are you talking about? There's two of them, North and South, which one? So with that, there's really no big difference. But as long as you have the nationality in relation to your geographical position, you have to have your nationality. Okay, now the second thing is, uh -huh. 
So when I see a person, I ask them, where are you from? Japan, what's your nationality? Japanese. Mm -hmm. Where are you from? China, what's your nationality? Chinese. Mm -hmm. Where are you from? Vietnam. Well, that's really not their... But that's what they're telling me. What? So my question is, if someone is saying you're more, you either stand, you stand with M-O-R or M-U-U-R, mm -hmm. then I'm trying to figure out where is that more land? I'm trying to stay. More land? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying, if you're saying Chinese, mm -hmm. and you're from China, mm -hmm. you're saying more, mm -hmm. where the more, I'm just, that's confused to me. When you're here, and if you're here, say, could we say that we're all from all over? Technically, we are the first people, but hold on, I'm going to get to your question. First and foremost, let's correct that about China. Their actual nationality is Manchurian. Mm -hmm. Manchurian. Yeah. Okay. Chinese is French, it's European. So they don't even know their nationality. <laughs> That's number one. They've been denationalized and they don't even know it. Number two, they're also corporate citizens. They're not natural persons. Huh? Really? Yeah. Everybody's been enslaved. The Moors are the only free people on the planet. What is a, a, a free white person? Free white person? If you're going to look it up in Black Law Dictionary, <laughs> fourth edition, people that look like y'all. <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah. again, going back to the question, yeah. wow. when, I, when anyone says they're more, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's anywhere. It's anywhere. It's, it's, to, to give it specifically to give, I think I know you're looking for that, that concrete yeah, detection. I, mean, yeah. I got you. With no doubt. Because he just said, he, he opened mm -hmm. up. Mr. Shannon, he opened up with you don't understand his nationality. Mm -hmm. He really came from the poor. I got you. Mm -hmm. And he made that a, a pretty important statement. Mm -hmm. The whole, all this presentation was important. But mm -hmm. when you said that, it's more than just your paperwork. You can yeah. do that, but if you don't understand, <coughs> yeah. this would be a problem. So I'm yeah. still trying to understand more. the more in the. Because yeah. you said the Quran, which is the trust document, mm -hmm. we're talking about something physical. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> if I leave something to my children, mm -hmm. I'm not just leaving them in the abstract. Mm -hmm. They're going to have some land, they're going to have some kind of property. Because mm -hmm. I asked the Arab, I said, do you all sell houses mm -hmm. or put poor clothes? He said, no, we don't. That doesn't happen over there where I am. No, it it's doesn't. It's our land. Yeah. So I'm just trying to understand the land when I say the okay. word Okay. Here's the deal. There's a book uh, called The Return of the Ancient Ones by one of our matriarchs. The Empress of the Washita, Empress Bertiasi, Tiara, Washita, Ghost in El Bay. Turner Ghost in El Bay. She proved that we are the mound builders and that through oral tradition of her matriarchal grandmother, who was queen of the Washita, who lived to be 117 years old, you will find out that quote unquote, we are remnants of the ancient Moors. Now, when she had gone to establish her position in place, her nationality and her geographical place upon the planet, it was determined to be here. The land today known as the Americas. Not only that, our landmarks were the mounds. Our nationality once again, we are remnants of ancient Moors. So when you speak of more land, you're standing on more land. This cannot be argued. She was accepted at United Nations in Geneva, Switzerland. In UNESCO. <coughs> huh? UNESCO too. In UNESCO? Okay, I got the United uh, Nations Geneva, Switzerland document. And it says, the Washita, they dug the Malia, oldest indigenous people on earth. I, I think she want to try to get a little deeper than that, if I can, if I can say it right. Yeah. But we are the autochthonous people, the indigenous people, the original people of this land, of this yeah. earth, and it's 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 heir to us. It's our it's our birthright given to us by our forefathers and our foremothers. So we was original people on this land. It was inherited to us by birth from our family. So it it was passed down to us a lot uh, uh, in our genealogy. Geology, oh, I can't. Geology line. Genetics. 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 Yeah. So that's why they're saying this is our land, more land, because we was here first. We were the original people. Mm -hmm. 
So this why it's our land. It was given to us by birth. Just like if something was to happen to any one of your parents or something, you know, God forbid. But anything that was theirs was passed on to you. By default. That, but that's your birthright. Mm -hmm. And so it just don't stop with your mother or your father. What about their mother and father? Oh, Whatever yeah. theirs was passed on to them. Yeah. And so it doesn't stop. It, it keeps going back in history. To the dawn of time. And so that's why we, this is our land. The more and land, because we were the autochthonous indigenous people of this land. And at the dawn of time, there were two basic classes of the earth. You got to remember that the earth was, all the landmass was one. Pangea. Mm -hmm. And they call it Pangea. Again, remember this, this, this trickery of this system that this machine that Brother Obashango was talking about is, it's a very fine-tuned machine. And it's aimed directly, not at your body. It's aimed directly at your mind. So even calling this solid landmass Pangea is a trick. That's right. It was previously called Mu. M-U. Which is what Empress Veridiasi, Tierra Washita, Ghost, and El Bay sell us. And what she said was that Mu was the land of the Moors. So I think that answers your question where you're trying to get to. The land of the Moors, you're standing on it. It's just, it was called Mu. It was called America. It's called whatever they named it. It'll explain. We'll break it all the way down for you. The turn of the ages one. But that's that's the short version for what you But see, it goes back to what I'm saying. The land is already she's already done the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The land's already landmarked. The oldest mounds are here. The mounds are older than the pyramids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when they when they said that, you know, first and foremost, that for they, they tell you the Indians didn't build the mounds. Mm -hmm. They if you classify Native American or Indian, you didn't build those mounds. Mm -hmm. Somebody older than you did. Mm -hmm. So that's where her work was already done and who she told was already here and who she classified us as. Moors. M-U-U-R-S. And she says M-O-O-R-S. But we're remnants of ancient Moors. And she also talks about the ancient Moors that came from uh, the land today known as Syria or Baal that built the temple on the Baal wow. man. Yeah. So there's a lot of history in that book. But like Noble Drew Ali goes into it. The Moors were living up and down the Mississippi River before the European came here. Mm -hmm. And just like C.M. Bay goes into it in Clock of Destinies, Volumes 1 and 2, what was the name of the people in America before black, Indian, and he says another term, but I can't remember what it is. He said, what's the $64 question to any historian? He said the name was Moor. If you look at the time that Columbus came over, there was no India on the planet. It didn't exist. Mm -hmm. That name was known as Bharat, Poro, Moria, Hindustan by the time Columbus came over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so where was, if there couldn't be any Indians if there was no India. <laughs> and just to show the, just wow. to keep it in line, keep it in line, but again, the attack is on our brain. When you're printing any of these books, if you have a, a, a printed press, CMYK, Chroma Magenta Colors, Yellow, Cyan, Yellow, and Cyan, Cyan C, and then K is really referring to the, the, the black portion. Okay? But here's the kicker. When you go see and get that black portion refilled, they fill it with India. The color, it means black. <laughs> All the way throughout. They teach it in school too. India oh. means black in antiquity. When you go to India now, you see the South Indian people. They darker than everybody in this room. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay? So it's 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 all in alignment. We just have to remember. Never. Tell me logically where it comes from, though. 
uh, in India, mm -hmm. well, the Indus Kush portion. There I, you I, go. Induce. I, induce. And, and, that's, and again, yeah. going back to the Kushites. Yeah. Going back to the nature and the, the derivative nature of the people. And we have, this is something she says all the time. And, and I love being in the midst of, of, of all of us because, again, we are who our ancestors were. So when we look at how our ancestors are great, it's a beautiful thing. But since when does the, the water, does the Trinity River separate Dallas from Dallas? Or is it Dallas on the north side of the Trinity River and Dallas on the south side of the Trinity River? It's, that's pretty much just Dallas, right? Or Fort Worth on either side, right? You got, like right downtown, you got Fort Worth, Trinity River, you got Fort Worth and Fort Worth, right? <laughs> So since when does water separate a land mass of people? It never it did. <laughs> Especially with the Darfuna canoe that they found that's over 8,000 years old in Nigeria that said, yeah, it, was, it, it, it could have easily been over here seaworthy. We've been navigating the planet for thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years. They try and yes. Well, you know, it kind of go back to, they always put it in our face, we just didn't understand or didn't know what was going on. Even in school, they teach us nurture rhymes. Anybody want to elaborate on that? Mm -hmm. You know about the nurse line, uh, uh, any, many, many more. You know, just a whole bunch of things they put in our face that we just wasn't uh, conscious of, or we just didn't know. Now, a lot of stuff going to start making more sense. The more knowledge you get, the more stuff going to start making more sense. The more stuff you see, you're going to be like, hmm, you know, just going to just change the way you think about a lot of things. Yeah, that's true. I don't know what well, yeah. Mighty yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, we gotta understand. Humpty Dumpty, you know, all these nursery rhymes meant something. And they was really all talking about our people. You know, Jack and Jill, all of them. Yeah. This is, this, this is what I'll say. Uh, hopefully, sister, that answers your question as to where we are geographically and why this is the land of the Moors. Mm -hmm. And not only that, a lot of people think, like, you was taught the name America came from where? Mm -hmm. uh, what's the the European yeah. Okay. If you go read the Congressional Records of the United States Congress 50th session between uh, uh, United States Congress <coughs> uh, uh, 50th uh, session, I think, part two. 50th Congress, United States uh, Records of the 50th Congress second session between the years of 1888 and 1889. They will tell you that America did not come from Amerigo Vespucci. Mm -hmm. It came from the Amariques mm -hmm. of South America. Mm -hmm. Amariques mm -hmm. of South America. Now, if you go read a book, this is this is for those on a higher level of esotericism, but it's called uh, The Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manly P. Hall. He talks about the land being known as Amaruca. So he talks about the Amaru peoples. So this is nothing new. Just like everybody knows that this is also the first Egypt over here. The Europeans know this. That's why I would like for y'all to go get this book. It's called Ancient Mystic Oriental Masonry. And that's it. Uh, yep, the secret teachers of all ages. What is it called? So this is the greatest empire than what it was over there. Okay. This is the first. This is the first. This is the first Egypt. This is the first empire. The first world order came from here, from the Americas. Is it any wonder why you find the highest diversity of mo type blood here in the Americas? In genetics, the highest diversity for a gene establishes the place of origin for it. And old type blood is the oldest. You can tell it's the oldest. Why? Because you find it more diversified in various groups of people around the world. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, not only that, if you look at the Americas, from South America on up to Mexico, 90 to 100 percent of the uh, indigenous inhabitants carry old type blood. In the South, it's uh, 80 to 90 percent. Carry old type blood. <laughs> and then as you further go up to like uh, the northern part of the country, it's anywhere from 70 to 80 percent. 
So it's 60 to 70 percent in various areas. So this, this information is another reason why they really want to direct us from being doctors and scientists because you will find out the truth about who you are. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. You find out the truth about who you are. Not only, yeah, not only that. Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Uh, a statement that you. First of all, I'm impressed with you as a young man having the knowledge that you have, and you. and, 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 the, and the understanding of, of, of all that you taught us tonight. But my question is, yes, we need to know who we are, yes, and we're learning that. Mm -hmm. We need to, to have a, an understanding of uh -huh. how to claim what is ours. Uh -huh. And it is the ultimate goal, uh -huh. since it belongs to us, uh -huh. should we not be compensated for what has been taken from us? Yes, ma'am. You're mm -hmm. absolutely correct. But the only way we can get to that is first through status correction. Yes, ma'am. Now, this is what we do in our clan in Arkansas. Okay. What we do is we tell everybody first and foremost to get your DNA. And the reason why you get your DNA done, because prior to you having a nationality, nationality, if you want to look at it, yes, it is a birthright. But what has happened is we're living in the age of, we're still under the age of empires. So therefore, the empires, the age of empires have all established how they're going to get along. And how they're going to get along is through the auspices of international law. So they come together in international law and have established various agreements amongst each other of what must take place. So, with that being said, uh, to remove yourself from being viewed as agricultural chattel underneath United States Code Title 7 USC Section 136, they're basically saying you're an animal. You can go in and read it. Does anybody have internet on their phone right now? Would somebody care to pull that up? 7 USC 136? And then go down to D and read it aloud so everybody can... Uh, See what it says? Well, hear what it says? It says 7 U.S.C.? Yes, 136. Yes, Bill. Uh, two questions. Number one, the Empress book there, I was not able to get one before. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I used to go down and print off it, but she was out of the book, out of print. So is anybody going to ever print that book again? Yeah, 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 Joe. Like this? You got it? Oh, Write this down. Take a picture. This is what it looked like now. What's it called? Okay. Return of the Angel. Return of the Angel. They condensed it. Oh, the guy is the Dallas. And you can get it. No, flip it over the back. Hey, what section of it? D. I said, I don't think it was their website. Okay. And the other question is, I just sent out here a kid off today. So I received my information back. What do I take it from there? Uh, there's a geneticist by the name of Tyrone Cannon. He's been independently studying genetics for the past three or four years. Uh, he has already presented his information to uh, molecular biologists and uh, PhDs of uh, genetic sciences, and none of his information has come back refused. So he has a website? Uh, he has an email address. Uh -huh. Are you ready? Just give me a call. Yes, ma'am, and I'll get you on over there. Too. Okay, yeah. Could you go Yes, that's what I was doing. I just want somebody to read that. Does anybody 7 have? U.S.C. Section D, 136, Section D, animal. The term animal means all vertebrate and invertebrate species, including but not limited to man and other mammals, birds, fish, and shellfish. Wow. Now, can you please... Tell uh, them what Title <coughs> 7 is under the United States Code. Title 7? Yes. <coughs> what is the name for that code, that title? Read it directly out loud. U.S. Code, Title 7, Agriculture. <laughs> wow. Right. Does, hold on for a minute. Does everybody get the picture of what that's saying? Mm -hmm. Are there any questions on what that is actually saying? Can you repeat that? Are they saying agriculture? Exactly what they're saying. Oh, okay. Yes, exactly. Chattel property. The same Man without a nationality is property. Oh, okay. Chattel, animal, livestock, agriculture. As long as you choose to call yourself an adjective, you are considered your property. A property has to have a name. That's the name you gave it to now they own it. 
I've all my national, I have my national to my DNA. Mm -hmm. For the people who haven't done it, I'm kind of jumping the gun. You already mentioned the first step is to do the, is to do the DNA. Mm -hmm. And a reliable source would be 23andMe. Yes. And for the people who don't know, what is the next step and who to contact? That is a legit because you have a lot of fake more mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. claiming to be something that they're not mm -hmm. so that they can continue the process of step. Like I said, the gentleman that we work with is Tyrone Cannon. He's been independently studying genetics for the past four years. And he basically gives a printout with documentary historical evidence that matches up with what the DNA is actually saying. And the reason why it's called a dissent, it means a difference in opinion or a difference or a disagreeing in a matter as to regards of how they have already stated that something is so. They have laid, they have you labeled, they've labeled you as Negro, black, colored, Afro-American, African-American. <coughs> but with the genetic evidence, it's saying, and they labeled you as an animal. The genetic evidence says first, no, this person is human, number one. And number two, if the varying markers come back, this person is also a toxinous in regards to the evidentiary uh, 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 database that they have in regards to who they say was here. These genetic markers show up in them. And that's basically what he prepares. And that can be challenged because it's in their database. And then he gives historical findings from various like A.E. Quatrophagus, which was an author on us being over here, uh, uh, the Luzia, La Pia Vermelha, uh, that I mentioned earlier and what they said about this person, and uh, various groups of people from Southeast Asia who they said have actually come over here, like the Papua New Guineans, the Benawatuans, uh, all those groups of people whom they know were over here that looked like us today. So that's pretty much why he puts that together, so you can present it to these people to say, hey, this is what you have me labeled as in your system. But guess what? The rights of blood and kinship cannot be destroyed by any civil law. The highest they can reach in their state legislators and in Congress is civil law. That's man-made law. But the rights of blood and kinship cannot be destroyed by any man-made law. They can't reach that high. Their arms are too short to box with that. <laughs> you know, that's why I know what Joe said. It's important that you be what you know. And I was told, when you can prove that a guy a single contradicting who you are, See, he know and the brother said, well, look, we got our dirty moors. And know what you are, he knew this thing too. And if you ever go back and read his proclamation at the very end of it, then, he said, uh, the end of time is drawing near, and I'm so set a lot just within the five o'clock, and I know what you are. That's the reason why many hearts have turned to stone. Many have eyes to see, but can't see, and ears to give, but can't hear. At least they will be concerned about what they're seeing. These are the tried hours, dear Moore, and every evil spirit is moving now. Mm -hmm. They're trying every weak mind mm -hmm. to turn out and make the true foundation that's been laid by me to profit. But if you have the love of Allah in your heart and the spirit of your forefathers, you could have nothing you hear or see. But with sacrifice, so much your very eyes to protect your pocket and your movement. That's real. I share them. It's long. So we have to be what we know. Because other than that, I told this, this gentleman the other day. He was saying, well, I'm indigenous, I'm indigenous. You don't know that. How do you know that? Prove it. Well, I got, thank you. I got documentary evidence that they said that my people were here. I said, man, the Indian Citizenship Act, I told a friend, the guy was talking all this crazy, man, ho-hum, that he couldn't prove because the Europeans supposedly got documentation evidence and he's bearing the name of the colonizer. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bearing the name of the colonizer. Yeah, that's right but you yelling, you indigenous, and this, that, and the third, and we had to fight for our land. Well, first and foremost, you fighting under the wrong name. You fighting under the colonizer's name. Mm -hmm. But you're indigenous. I said, number one, and then I told uh, a friend of mine who knows him, I said, all you got to do is go look up the Indian uh, Citizenship Act of 1924. They destroyed that, number one, if you're Indian. <laughs> and then number two, go look up the Nationality Act of 1940. Indians don't have any rights. No. Mm -hmm. None. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. color of law. That's why they don't have color reserve. Federal Patrol. Yeah. Federal Reserve Nations. Reserve Nations. Yeah. Reserve. Reserve right to take note. Yeah. And then not only that, Russell Means broke that down, uh, Lakota, before he passed away. Russell Means said a majority of these reservations are actually controlled basically by 90% of the families that control them are so-called 
white, but European. Mm -hmm. And maybe about 10% <coughs> uh, of, the, of the council that controls the reservations is a so-called Indian. So they don't even control their own land. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Right. They're just basically man placed on some place to be quiet and eventually die out. But guess what? This is what happens when you abandon the creed and principles of your forefathers and your foremothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you stand outside of the law because number one, the fourth commandment is honor thy father, thy mother, that thy days may be lengthened upon the face of the earth that the Lord thy <coughs> God has given me. Amen. So guess what? So-called Indian on these reservations, those skulls found in East Holliston Mills, Tennessee, 40,000 years ago, don't belong to you. The topper site in Allendale, South Carolina, don't belong to you. The mounds don't belong to you. There's somebody older. We're the mothers and fathers of this land. So until you come back into your proper person and correct your status, you're going to continue to get what you're getting now. It's not going to get any better. Your name is enlisted at the Geneva Convention, United Nations, as the oldest indigenous people on earth. So until you honor your father and your mother, and I hate to say it, but the so-called Negro, these sports athletes, and uh, I'm sure if this ever makes its way to YouTube, yes, I'm talking to you. Mm. So expect this. Mm. You heard it from Obashango Well. <laughs> <laughs> Be prepared to lose policemen operating in that system, your pensions, mm -hmm. athletes, actors, and all these other peoples your houses, your cars, just like the common man, you think you're safe. You're not safe because property can't own property. Mm -hmm. Until you get back into your proper status, you own nothing. You don't even own your own labor. Mm -hmm. None of that belongs to you. It was pledged and hypothecated from birth. Mm -hmm. So when you go to when you go to work, when you go run that football <laughs> up and down that field, thinking you're making top dollar, no. They just move some funds from one side of the ledger to the other. <laughs> and paid you out of something that was already established at birth. <laughs> That's it. So you're not making any money. <laughs> you're just too of minority aspects in the mind. You're just too childlike in the mind to manage your own affairs. So they said, well, this is what we're going to do. We'll take uh, asset credit from this side of the ledger and put it on that side of the ledger and we'll let him think that he's making all of this money or he's slam dunking basketballs for all of this money. No. Eventually, guess what's going to happen? You don't even own your own labor. You never took control of the aspects of the trust that was placed on you at birth. You never honored your father, father and your mother, so therefore they're not going to honor you. You're dealing with, excuse me, Ashkenazim, which we know what they are. <laughs> Those are the children of, again, the one of the few Okay, so in the Bible, since we're talking about the Bible and everything being trust law, we find that there were three main uh, progenitors from the flood. You had Shem, Ham, and Japheth, right? The Bible and everything in it generally speaks about two of those sons and the offspring, father and mother, as we're talking about inheriting the blood, right? Those two offspring were generally Shem and Ham. Yes. And they say that those were the cursed ones. But when you find in the so-called scriptures, you find and you're reaching in all of the curses, when it talks about the curse of leprosy, it was a pale skin curse. Mm -hmm. Leprosy was a pale skin curse. When Moses stuck his hand in his arm and he came back out, he said it turned lepers to snow, he put it back in and it returned to normal. So we know that it wasn't it wasn't it, it wasn't normal to have lighter skin, pigmented skin. Albinism. Albinism as, as we like to return to. So as we're talking about Ashkenazim, Japheth, the one of the sons whose descendants are least spoken about in any biblical or Quranic text, Ashkenaz was one of his offspring. The Ashkenazi Jews, so-called Jews. Uh, all of that ties into everything that he's talking about in this particular They thing. control the commerce. And that's who all of your Hollywood stars and your pro athletes and whatnot have to answer to. Mm -hmm. And they are operating by cultural plagiarism. Because a Jew is not an Israelite. 
They're operating by cultural plagiarism, but guess what? They're using your cultural birthright, which is one of our schools of thought, to honor their father and their mothers, because they don't forget where they came from, to reap the benefits of that because our people threw it away. We threw very, very many schools of thought away. So until they learn the truth about that, guess what? They'll never own anything. The farthest they can get with those big houses and those big cars and that money is what's called equitable use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> equitable use. Poppy can't own poppy. That's it. So now that you know, correct your status. <laughs> 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 you said that Indian Citizenship Act of 1924? No, the Indian Citizenship Act of 1924 uh -huh. and the Nationality Act of 1940. There was no land of India in 1492. So because they're not honoring their fathers and their mothers, the treaties that they made were in fraud. Mm -hmm. Could you go to those steps from the top of the DNA? We'll Once you get the DNA and you get in touch with uh, Tyrone Cannon, and then he does what's called a descent. And uh, basically supporting first and foremost that uh, based upon the evidence that's found in your genetic background, who you are in relation to the land. Uh, not only that, the DNA also removes that agricultural yoke that, uh, from around your neck mm -hmm. by saying that you're human. Mm -hmm. Because it said including man and all other mammals. So as a human, you have human rights. Animals don't have human rights. Right. You have what's called animal rights activists <laughs> But humans have human rights. So what's the next step after you do that? You okay, do that. after you do that, then what you do is you do your proclamation of nationality. <coughs> now there are a couple of people that can help you with that. The elder can help you with it. Yeah, I sure do that. Okay. Yeah, uh, you, uh, you can do it yourself. Uh, I have documents online that I've done. Pop public record, you get in front of a computer, you type it up. Then what you would do is, you send that off to various people. Number one, you send it to the government. We always pretty much keep it light dealing with that, your proclamation of nationality. The reason why we send it to a governor, because number one, 99.9% .9 of the time, the governor's a shriner, or he's a high-level mason. So he knows the truth about who you are. And now you're letting him know that you know, that he knows that you know <laughs> who you yeah, are. Yeah, and who he is. Yeah, and who he is as well. And that's when it starts. Yeah. You know, another thing, we got a guy that had a call and he's European, white people. That's correct. Yeah. I mean, purity, freedom, mean God, God, I mean, rule the land. And that's us. We rule the land. That's the status. The status. Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition, free white person. Go look it up. Okay, so you sent it to the governor. Yes. Sir. Secretary of State. Secretary of State? Well, I don't do it to the Secretary of State. No. no. I keep it very simple. As long as, see, this is, see, here's the thing. I'm going to tell you how I do it. Now, I keep it simple. <coughs> you got some people that mail everything out to. The I, only time I blast everything out is if I'm doing high level, high power documents that are meant to uh, create an effect or a change or something like uh, dealing with uh, the banking. That's a whole other animal. I'm not going to talk about that this evening. But dealing with nationality, the only thing you really want to do is take your proclamation of nationality and send it to the governor. Your DNA descent and the proof of that document, you send that to the governor, you send it to the President of the United States, and you send it to the United Nations Secretary General. Because guess what? Now he knows you're indigenous and he already, they already know what you're knocking at the door for. Who is it? Right, some indigenous peoples. Mm -hmm. Can I come in? <laughs> so now with that and the Declaration of Human Rights, uh, uh, not Declaration of Human Rights, but the Proclamation of Nationality, then once everybody gets it, you wait a few days, 15 days, Always send a certified mail return receipt. Make sure you always include the certified mail number in there. Return receipt, who you're sending it to. Mm -hmm. And you go down and you make public record of that, along with another document that's called the Affidavit of Adoption Permit. 
the elder has a lot of my records, so he can pull stuff off to show you. Or he can just call me, tell me, say, uh, make sure she gets this document. So you'll see you have, you know, uh, a diagram to go by. Then you make public record of that. Once you got that, then now we deal in what's called securitization of your rights. Securitization of your rights is to make sure that they honor it, so you want to form a contract with them. That's the reason why we deal in silver and gold. All contracts, man, we're getting into contract law now. We really don't want to go too much into that. I want to yield the floor, but all contracts have to have at least five basic principles. Number one, truth, offer, and acceptance, and agreement, and consideration. Consideration means something of value that supports the contract. So that's the reason why we deal in silver, gold, things of that nature. And we create bonds securitizing your rights, place these bonds in uh, specific places, and then we come back and secure those bonds underneath international law. So, But right now, the first thing you want to do is just DNA, descent, proclamation of a nationality, and a loyal permit, which is a document that we do. Different people do it different ways. So if I were you, I would investigate which most interests you and which way may be more for you, but I know how we do it, how we've been doing it for the past, what, five years. And your parsonage? Uh, I just charge for my time. I don't really do that anymore. Uh, I have a secretary that handles that. I'll discuss that with you later. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned something about the, uh, can you mention, oh, the DNA. Yeah. Can you speak on that because a lot of DNA companies out there, what do you want to recommend? According to our geneticists, We've been using 23andMe. Oh, they do the GNA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He just analyzes the DNA. No, 23andMe is the company. Oh, he, he just actually, analyzes the results. So he actually does the DNA? No, 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 no. no. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, the company 23andMe does it. They send you a kit. All you do is send them some, they want some kits from you. <coughs> so send that email. Okay, when I got the email, okay, when I got the email, I thought the time on Mr. Cannon was 23andMe. No, mm -hmm. no, no. Mm -hmm. no. 23 and me is a giant I laboratory. Right. I'll show you all my forms. Oh, okay. I thought it was. No. So He's just the person that takes your raw data when it comes back from them and looks for specific things in accordance with the information <coughs> and data that he has. So 23 and me does the DNA. Yes. But Mr. Cannon would analyze the DNA. Correct. Oh, I thought 23 and me and Cannon was all the same. I no. Okay. <laughs> How no. do we contact Mr. Cannon? Uh, and I, 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 I got it. He'll get it. Okay. Yes, Elder. What is, uh, do you have the step-by-step uh, -step process anywhere? Do you have a website? No, uh, somebody's building me one right or now. Do you have the, I, I can talk to you later, I don't know, mm -hmm. but I want the step-by-step -step process because I'm on that path, so I want to take it all with the Okay, okay. I'm not Okay, you know you call me anytime, Elder. Yeah. Are there any more questions? Yeah, oh, we're going to let you sit down then. Well, Mr. Shane, you've always had this power to me. You were learned as a child from birth. Mm -hmm. Most of us, I can speak myself being this. Mm -hmm. my, my grandmother, may she rest in peace, for all these years, her, her mother's mother was an Indian. Mm -hmm. I used to hear those stories about her grandma. Mm -hmm. Now that I've gotten to this step, step mm -hmm. I see what you said. So my question is, now mm -hmm. that you, you had that knowledge, mm -hmm. you knew it as a, as a baby, you're now a grown man, Mm -hmm. Now that you proclaimed it, what benefits have you, have you experienced before you did all this? Well, number one, it's not about benefit. That's where we go in to it looking for something wrong. Mm -hmm. Benefit. Mm -hmm. There's no benefit. It's about honor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where a lot of people go wrong because they're going into this looking for a benefit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need to save my house. Oh, I got a court case I'm trying to get out of. Oh, I got this, or I got that. No, what about dishonoring your ancestors? Mm -hmm. right. Whatever happened to that? We forgot about that. That's the reason why, excuse my language, we're in this hell, we're in the day. Because we've cut off the connection of those that can help us. Mm -hmm. Until you remember your ancestors and honor them, you can expect continued hell on earth. Right. Right. That's also in the Bible. Yeah. You know, the ridiculous thing is, too, we go to the poll and vote every time. And I say, man, you're voting to be enslaved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And voting, and voting in, in, in the name of your, your colonizer slash yeah. oppressor. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, slave has power of the most. Yeah, so you can't even own you don't even own your own vote. You don't even own your own voice because it's not your name. That's ridiculous. Yes. I think the benefit, and well, I know the benefit, if we teach these young kids that they came from kings and queens and teaching their history, it changed what they think about themselves. That's the benefit. That's one of the benefits. Right. You know, by, by, by just. Question. Can you prove that every child came from a king or queen? No. But we're not not that they came from. It's just the point is. You should, uh, I'm going to tell you why what, I asked that. What, what, I mean, what, what, what it is, as long as they know what their forefathers were. Because as growing up as growing up as a, as a, uh, as a kid, we was always thought that. We was taught at one time, if it weren't for John Smith, he raised me from a dead, a dead state of mind, I was in. Mm -hmm. And uh, so before the end, you know, we was taught that, you know, uh, we was all slaves. If they want to come rescue us, we still be running around Africa with uh, uh, chasing lies and titans. Because this is what we was taught as a kid. Right. And this is what they, uh, you know, y'all better be lucky we, uh, our, our people put y'all in slavery. I mean, because it's just the mentality. When we learn who you, where you come from, that just change your whole, you know, if these kids do this today, It'd be a whole different outcome. Let me, uh, let me clarify why I brought that up. And I want to address this matter as well. When I first came in, I was saying, I'm here for the next generation. Uh -huh. to help them so they would know this. Uh -huh. But I, um, in the state that I am in right now, there was an incident where the mayor of the city did a proclamation uh -huh. for abortion right now. Uh -huh. For some reason, he was sent there. He did. Now, some mayors. When I went online, some mayors are just saying those proclamations, some are not. Uh -huh. That's, and I remember where, somewhere I read where Coffee Mill looked at all the way, rest in peace, said, if you believe your condition to change, you know, join the Board of Science of America, proclaim your nationality. So that's why I was wondering, not so much to get out of the situation, uh -huh. but with these mayors who sent in some of these proclamations, uh -huh. Uh -huh. when certain things happened to the Moors, and now they are waking up, I'm going to tell, tell, tell you why they were sent. The mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm explaining to you why they were sent. Mm -hmm. Why they resent them? Uh, I know y'all got questions. Let me let me wrap it up with her. The reason why they resent them is because in a lot of these cities, a lot of these Moors are not standing on the five principles. Thank They're not you. standing on love, yes. truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Man knows not by being told. Man is exactly what he knows. And if man knows, then he must become what he knows. If we know better, then we do better. Mm -hmm. But you got so many dirty Moors. Mm -hmm. Involved in a whole bunch of illegal activity and doing things that they have no business doing, or they're trying to exercise something in law that they don't have full comprehension of, mm -hmm. and it makes right. you know it it, it it makes a stain. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we have to understand that the mayor, because the city the city of Little Rock mayor, he signed it twice, never rescinded. So a lot of them are waiting for us to wake up because we're the we're their only salvation. Mm -hmm. We are their only salvation because guess what? The national debt ain't on our backs and no, it ain't on my back because why? Because first and foremost, man, I'm attaching us to the soil. You can't tie the debt of the United States around my neck because they owe me. So therefore, with that being said, uh, it's only tied to two people. So-called United States citizens without a nationality, and those who could never be citizens in the first place, known as Negroes, Blacks, and Coloreds, and who have refused to proclaim their nationality. That's whom the debt is tied to. <laughs> so when the place collapses, and if you know anything about banking law, the creditors will liquidate the corporation. The United States doesn't have it. We don't have it. Go to the surety. Who's the surety? So therefore, if the surety cannot pay, then what happens is they got to take the assets of the surety, the surety being the human body of the U.S. citizen, which is the U.S. citizen corporation. So therefore, they snatch you up, and they have the right to enslave you and place you in debt camps to work the debt off. Let me explain something to you, too. On January 29th, I just passed the Supreme Court ruling that the United States Okay, was a lady by the name of Dr. W. C. And he was explaining the history as he's doing now. Okay, and he went off into the DNA too. 
And you can tell all the, you know, the Europeans and not to insult anyone. This is for information and purposes only. Go to Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition, and look up the word free white person. Some of them had already done it. And you'd be surprised how many Europeans want to get back with him today. But now they would be a I haven't gotten any rest since then. Because see what done happened to them. <laughs> I have. They, they, they turned the I game around on us. All you got to just think about it right now. And you got to turn around too. Now they enslaved us to serve them. But they say we are the landlord and they're the tenant. And when we know ourselves, we just turn it back around again. And, hey. That's right. We're the only ones that can save them in our proper person right. because we have the right to say under rights of indigenous peoples, which is based off of human rights, what military activities we want to go on on our land and which ones we don't. Mm -hmm. It's in the rights of indigenous peoples, UN Resolution 61 slash 295. Y'all gonna look it up. Obama signed it in 2010, December. Mm -hmm. So, there's not a benefit it's a duty. Right. Duty. It's a duty. You have a duty and an obligation to be in proper person. There is no excuse. You have a duty and an obligation to teach the generations coming up after you. There's no excuse. You have a duty and an obligation to teach along the hedges, highways, and byways. It's no excuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have a duty to study, 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 to show thyself approved. And then after you've studied all that you can, next to study yourself mm -hmm. for perfection of man. There's no excuse. Mm. When I say man, I mean man is mine. That's it. So, therefore, the only way you want to get out of this situation is through due diligence. And the same aspects that put you in this situation. You got to go right back to it, which is the law. They put you in it with the law, so you got to climb up out of it with the law. Mm -hmm. yes. One uh, question I want to uh, ask about uh, federals. Yeah. And when you get back into your, you know what I'm saying, your right of state, mm -hmm. how, how do that do as far as bearing arms? When you correct your status, mm -hmm. that's the reason why I tell everybody. Uh, I still have mine. In oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, are you talking about that? Okay. I think he was talking about something else. Oh, okay. He was talking about if you've been convicted, basically, will it clear that? Oh, okay. Well, there's a number of things you can do. Uh, once your status is corrected, then you can use the Administrative Procedures Act of 1946. And basically what that is is you can challenge them for the record. You're going to have to send it out to a lot of people, a whole lot of people. But you can challenge them for the record. And then what you can do after that when they don't answer, you could actually man default them in court. So I will look up the Administrative Procedures Act of 1946. But I'll tell you this right here. Me, myself, I don't have any felonies. I sold my gun. And the reason why I sold it because I'm spiritually armored up to where none of this stuff is going to come to me anyway. I know sacred tones and chants, man, to put an armor around me so strong, man, that it'll be impenetrable. We got to get back to these signs. You know what? Yeah. The outlaw people, the outlaw and law and holy justice. Yeah. Yeah. Don't withdraw our leave, said, yeah. until you get everything in place. Okay. The more, yeah, the more should be with honor sale, not even a pocket knife. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Once you master this, um, come on. This is the this this up here. Come on. This is the weapon of mass destruction. Come on. Come on. Come on. For real. Yes. I have a question. Um, we were well. It's been discussed about the uh, advantages of, but what about the disadvantages when you don't know? Is there a, a way that you can uh, cross the line too soon? You understand when you don't when you don't know the ins and outs of mm -hmm. you know claiming. Um, uh, that's, that's the reason. That's, that, that, that's basically. That's the reason yeah. why you study. You mm -hmm. always make sure you know what you are doing before you do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take one more question. I'm gonna have to close it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Oh, well, actually, one for Do you see how continuing crisis on 
Soon come. Soon come. He think he not. <laughs> you remember that old that old dog when you see a stretch your arm strong when you pull on the legs and the all arms right. and all that? I'm pulling something every which way but loose. So. <laughs> Thank you. Very Thank you. Yeah, I, I would because love. These temples are just saying all types of different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You did it, and you did it very simple. Thank you. Thank you. Love mm -hmm. you to come back, but with the larger audience, but with the right audience, okay. still at the same time. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I said all I had to say. Thank y'all for listening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Take a break. Take a break. Yeah. Take, a, take a break. All right. Take a, take a five minute break. Here. Great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.